I'm so excited to be able to share, um, as part of the centennial celebration, I'm a group of centenarians who can share their stories about life in the Danish West Indies and the American presence early on. Um, most often we forget about our senior citizens and their contributions to where we are today as a Virgin Islands. I will co-sponsor with Barbara and Arthur Pomeranz. Um, Barbara brought the idea that she wanted to support the Centennial Commission and support the whole centenarian um, vision for what the Virgin Islands was at that time. And she asked for my assistance and be able to producing a luncheon and, and just a talk with the centenarians uh, so a video presentation can be made and future generations of Virgin Islanders can find out their stories and have a sort of a sense of what the island was during that time. My father's still alive, he's 102. He was born in uh, May 6, 1914. My father's name is John Alwyn Richards Sr., but his stage name is Lad Richards. L.A.D., Lad Richards. He had his own group for years and years and years. So they traveled all over the United States, even in Boston, they played all over. My father said, told us one time when he was in grade school, uh, I think it was 1927 or 1928, uh, when Lindbergh was apparently flying, or trying to fly around the world, he landed here. The spirit of St. Louis, sort of, the teacher took the class, to see the air, the airplane. They had the airplane cordoned off, um, and my father said he was a little wicked boy when he was young, so he broke away from the rest of the class, and he went over and he touched the, the, the plane, and he got spanked for it. So he said, but he didn't mind touching the plane, and he took the beating for it, but this, that was in 1928. So. So that was one of the stories he talked about. Well, my mother, uh, my grandparents, her parents, um, were actually born in the 1800s on St. Croix. So my grandparents, great-grandparents, were ancestral natives of the Virgin Islands. And my grandparents always said, you know, our birth certificate says that we were Danish West Indian subjects. So after the transfer of these islands from Denmark to the United States, my grandparents moved from St. Croix to the United States, to New York, to make a better life. Yes. So after she learned ballet and tap from Miss Ella Gordon in um, New York, she returned home uh, with my grandparents while um, she hadn't finished high school yet, and she finished high school at the Christiansted High School on St. Croix. And then she opened up a, um, a dance school and taught many, many Virgin Islanders. She introduced the art form of ballet and tap to the Virgin Islands. So there are many Virgin Islanders still alive that Mrs. Shelterburn taught um, ballet and tap. Yes. Yeah. My mother is very, very spiritual. She's connected a lot to her God. Well, we're here uh, to honor her because um, of her years that she lived. And we appreciate to have her around still 101 years old. This coming October, she'll be 102, God's willing. A lot of people, one of the questions that have been asked is, why do you think she lived a long life? My mom just said a couple of things. I think laughter, family, she wants to be involved, even at 101. Mm -hmm. Even at 101, she wants to be involved. She, she wants to know what's going on, and she have to have a chicken soup and uh, <laughs> occasional mango, but uh, her family and her grandkids is what kept her, what keeps her going. I can't put a value on why she is so important because I can still touch her, you know? Her grandmother, I mean her mother, my, my great-grandmother was born in 18, um, uh, 1870s and she lived to 92, right? 93? Mm -hmm. um, and then she was the child of actually a slave. A sla her, her, my great-great-grandmother was born into <laughs> slavery but the Great, great Britain freed the slaves in 1867 and at that, at that time 
her grandparents were probably seven or eight. So I look at that as, man, that's, that's history in itself. I have history that I can touch in my own house. And the fact that she is the last living of her nine siblings, right? Yes. Uh, I, I, I want to protect that as long as God allows us to. But one of the things that I think is the most important in terms of changing times is that the growth of the Charlotte Amalia and the Virgin Islands was accelerated for that time period. Um, so you have an agricultural-based community on St. Croix, you have St. Thomas being a port town. Well, you have the American introduction with tourism. So things have just changed rapidly. The islands had just ex exploded. And, and during that time, these are the people that helped made it great. They can talk about their historic past, um, things about just a different way of life as opposed to everything so high tech today. And to share those stories, to have them is such an honor. You know, Dominica has the most centenarians of any other island in the Caribbean and probably in the world. So we're in a, a position to celebrate our own and hear their stories. And as part of an oral tradition, to be able to pass these stories along to the next generation, so they will know, they will have no idea of what life was like based on pictures and stuff like that. They can assume, but we have the ability to talk to a few people who lived it and share their stories.